Spring football is on and popping in Los Angeles, California. The Trojans have got the pads on, and we're going to give you a little bit of an update of what's going on under Lincoln Riley and the year two version of what USC is going to be. And if you watched USC last year, you're probably chomping at the bit saying, well, what's the defense look like? Alex Grinch, a lot of y'all have opinions on him. We're not here to talk about that. Just in terms of the development of this team defensively. There's a couple of encouraging things to take away from Lincoln Riley's press conference. We're going to kind of sift through the coach speak a little bit and take away what we feel like is valuable. And the first point being he talked several times about the way this team has developed physically over this offseason. Talked about how they had to make huge strides when he got there in terms of nutrition, in terms of strength conditioning. And I have buddies that played at USC and what Lincoln Riley is saying matches up perfectly with what they've, what they've told me behind closed doors in private conversations saying, yeah, you know, you got the branding of USC. They do a great job with the, the social media and the way they brand what we are as a program. Like, that's great. But we go to the dining hall and we're not eating like other guys that have transferred to SEC schools. So for them to make that stride from a nutritional standpoint, you should be encouraged about what they're going to be from a physical standpoint when they take the field. Because what was our, our major gripe with USC a season ago? Offense, phenomenal. Caleb Williams putting up video game numbers. He's out there playing road to glory. But they play Utah. They just can't match up physically. They, they got ran through. Let's call a spade a spade. They played Tulane. Defense couldn't stop anybody if they wanted to. Like that was the issue time and time again. They weren't able to match up physically. And for USC, with the level they recruit at and the resources they have available, they should be able to match up better. So the physical strides, what you're hearing them making, according to Lincoln Riley, that should be encouraging. Essentially, that's your number one goal of winter conditioning. You're not touching the football in terms of organized team activities under the coaches, at least. You're trying to win winter conditioning by adding extra mass, by becoming stronger, by becoming more of a problem when you got to meet that running back in a hole or when you got to break a tackle, whatever it ends up being. So defensively, you're making strides from a physical perspective. And then in addition to that, you should just be encouraged that it's going to be the second year in the system. Now, maybe you have issues with the system as a whole, and that's fine. I don't really blame you. I have issues with the system myself defensively. But the fact remains, you don't get worse at something your second year. And if you do, you got real problems. But science would tell us the more we do something, the better at it we get, the more comfortable we become in it. And there were times last year, and Lincoln Riley admitted as much, USC defensively kind of had that deer in the headlights look. They were kind of trying to pick it up as they went. So now having a full off season in the second year of this scheme, it should be encouraging. Okay, so will it be improved? Time will tell. But it's spring football. We're going to read into these things a little bit more than we would if it were fall camp or if it were just a typical game week practice. So be encouraged. Physical strides being made, mental strides being made, getting more comfortable second year in a scheme. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. We talk college football every single day. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and on Twitter at Jody Pakel. Appreciate y'all for that. The transfers at USC are hitting the ground running. And that's saying something, because think about what USC was last year. They took 19 transfers. Some of that was out of necessity. They had to overhaul the roster. They were missing bowl games, okay, when Lincoln Riley got there. That was the situation he inherited. We'll talk more about that in a second. They took 12 transfers so far this cycle. And the risk you run whenever you add new personnel into your program, you do your homework on that from a football standpoint, but the main concern you have is what are they going to be from a culture standpoint are they going to fit with our locker room are they going to bring positive habits to the locker room are they going to be team first guys because you transferred for a reason right whether it was it it just wasn't a fit culturally at your old stop whether you weren't getting playing time it didn't work for some reason at where you were previously so that's a risk you run but it sounds like according to lincoln rally a lot of these guys have hit the ground running from a football standpoint, as you probably knew they would, but from a culture standpoint too. The way they practice is fitting with how Lincoln Riley does things. Say what you want about Lincoln Riley and the way that he left Oklahoma. His teams know how to win ball games. You don't win ball games with a bad culture. Mason Cobb taking on a leadership role, the transfer from Oklahoma State, playing linebacker for him. Sounds like he's one of the leaders of that defense right now, which is impressive as he's been on campus for all of like, I don't know, 45 minutes. Marshawn Lloyd, sounds like he's a little more reserved, practices really hard, leading by example. Same thing for Dorian Singer, transfer receiver from Arizona, 
or excuse me, transfer receiver from Arizona who's going to be a force for them. Anthony Lucas, they're excited about what he could bring to the table. So a lot of these transfers so far, again, only a few practices in. We're going to get more eyes on them as we get more into the spring. But so far, so good is what I'm trying to tell you. So that's one piece of this with the transfers. The other thing that Lincoln Riley said about the transfers or the transfer portal as a whole should get you excited if you're a USC fan. Because the roster is already solid, right? Like the roster is already at a place where you can compete for a Pac-12 title. You did so a season ago. They asked him about the portal post-practice, and he said, yeah, we're going to be in the market. We got some scholarships. We're, we're going to be a player. Then there's going to be some, you know, some positions we want to address via the portal. The way that I interpreted that is like the Meek Mill song. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished is what Lincoln Riley is trying to tell you. They're going to go and get even more personnel and bring it to L.A. And that to me is just interesting because they're not just trying to win the Pac-12. Like, of course, that's one of the main goals for them. But he said, it, he said as much, last year wasn't good enough by our standards here at USC. Wasn't good enough. Pause really quickly. USC fans, remember where you were before Lincoln Riley got there? Missing bowl games. This year, you play for a Pac-12 title and you play for a New Year's Six Bowl. Now, obviously, the result in both those games you wish was different, but think about just the bar that's been reset at USC. It's where you always expected it to be long-term. It where it ha it's where it hasn't been frequently, or quite frankly, in a couple of years. So this is encouraging. They're not just content with playing for a Pac-12 title. They're not just content for playing for a New Year's Six Bowl. Caleb Williams is like, it bothers me that I haven't played in the college football playoffs yet in my college career. It's not okay with me. So I'm fired up to see what they do. When the bar is set at a certain standard, two things happen. You have guys that wash out and say, you know what? That bar is too high. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm hitting the portal. Great. They don't want you here anyway. The other thing is you hold the bar to a certain standard that's, that's high, and you have guys that say, okay, that's where we want to be. We want to achieve those kind of things. And they rally together, and they do extra, and they put in more work, and, and they push their teammates, and they all work together to reach that bar. When your standards are set to a certain place internally, like Lincoln Riley is saying, good things happen. So it's only spring football. There's going to be more practices to talk about and games that are going to happen here in the fall. We'll get fall camp before that. So sit tight. But I'm encouraged with what the updates are so far out of Los Angeles. Nick, break, lift, and heavy. This is your show. This is the hard count. We are live twice a week. Make sure you got the bell notification hit so you don't miss a minute of it. Make sure you're subscribed. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all, man. We're going to keep the party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.